I actually tried to look up a joke about leather for this tutorial, but everything I found was just terrible. I don't know. I'm starting to think that there are no funny jokes about leather, which is too bad. But despite that, I'm still going to show you how to create this quick leather texture today. It's going to be quite easy as well. And if you buy the texture on my Gumroad, you'll also get a free couch that I modeled. I know, pretty great, right? Well, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Um, <clears throat> I'm no different than any other hero, really, so let's not... If you want to call me a hero, that's okay. Speaking of heroes, these people, these people are heroes to me. If you want to be a hero to me too, you can by supporting me on Patreon. It's a pretty low bar if you ask me. You know, small commitment on your part in exchange for hero status. Seems like a good deal. Being a hero also comes with access to all my tutorial blend files, as well as some additional products I've made and I thought were quite cool. Here we are in Blender. This is going to be pretty quick. I'm going to start by putting a bevel modifier on here. So just go to the wrench on the side there, open this up and you can hit B and it'll just create a bevel modifier really quick. I'm going to set it to 0 0.05 and 3 and then W or right click to bring up this context menu and shade smooth. I'm going to change the top right to my 3D viewport, make it a little larger. Zoom in and uh, go into rendered mode by holding down Z and moving your mouse up there. And then let's change this whole middle area to our shader editor just so we have more room to work. Hit N to get rid of that shelf on the right. I'm going to change this to Cycles, but you could just as easily do this in Eevee. I'm just going to work with Cycles. I like the results better generally. You just know how to use it better. And uh, let's also change it to GPU Compute if you have the access to that. If you don't, don't worry about it. It just goes faster on my rig with that option selected. I'm going to hit Shift A in the Shader Editor and hit Search and then start typing Coordinate and it'll come up much faster than if you start typing Texture. And uh, this is a Node Wrangler shortcut, this next part here, where you hit Control Shift and left click while those are pressed down and you just get a preview going here so it brings up this viewer node right here and you can cycle through the options I'm gonna to go to object output I'm gonna hit shift A and bring in a mapping node and then shift A again and bring in a Voronoi texture I'm gonna change this to distance to edge and let's come out of that there It kinda of looks like cracks or whatever I mean it's kinda of like a leather texture already it's pretty fast you get something that looks pretty good I'm gonna bring in a color ramp place it right here and hit Control shift d twice to create three color ramps that are all attached to this Voronoi. For this first color ramp, I'm going to leave black at zero. I'm going to bring the white down to 0.03. And I'm going to set these colors differently as well. For the black, I'm going to open up the hex code and I'm just going to type in 74501E. So sort of, um, you know, brownish orange there. Accidentally move that flag back to 0 0.03. And then I'm going to change this white to 4E2F09. So just a darker brown there. You could set more flags, you know, have more complicated color picking set up here. Um, you know, I'm just doing it kind of simple. Not going to worry about that too much. For this second color ramp, let's check this out. This bottom flag is going to go at 0 0.02. And this top flag, I'm going to set at 0.3. The bottom flag, I'm actually going to change it to white. So I'm just going to drag this up all the way. And this second flag that's set to white, I'm going to change it to a shade of gray that's going to be BF, BF, BF. If the hex code is just three pairs of letters or numbers that are all the same, you can tell it's a shade of gray just because it's going to have equal red, green, and blue values contributing to the overall color there. Let's look at this bottom color ramp. The only thing I'm going to change is bring this white down. You see as I do, those lines get a lot less thick. I'm going to bring this down to 0.07. I'm going to hit Shift A and bring in a bump node. And that's going to go right before this principal BSDF, right after this bottom color ramp. This is going to go into the height. And this strength, I'm going to set it a bit lower at 0.2. I think that'll look a bit better. And this top color ramp, I'm going to plug into the base color. Middle color ramp, I'm going to plug into the roughness. And bottom one is going to go into the normal. Now let's take a look at this principled BSDF. You can honestly stop here for most projects, especially if it's not a close up. But if you are going to get close to this texture, maybe let's do something about this smoothness as well, just so it doesn't stick out quite as much. I'm going to grab this mapping node and hit Control shift d so it remains attached to that object output of the texture coordinate. And uh, let's take a look at this. I'm going to bring in a noise texture, place it here, and hit Control shift d so it duplicates it while even attached. Then I'm going to create a reroute by holding down Shift and right-clicking and dragging this top noise texture. Let's set this to something kind of high at uh, maybe 90. 
you know, that looks pretty good. We can always adjust it if we want. And I'm going to grab another bump map and run it into the height. So let's just see what this looks like. Looks pretty good. Let's run that into normal here. And uh, it's maybe a little strong. Let's change this to 0.1. And actually, this second noise texture is going to be kind of their controller for how much strength. Uh, sometimes what I do is I mask this out, but I actually thought of a different way to do this. So I'm going to bring in a color ramp and place it right here after that bottom noise texture that's only set to 2. And let's give ourselves a little bit more room to work, actually, so see a bit better what's going on. So uh, I've done this before, you know, where I bring in a mix RGB, I feed this into the top, and then this goes into maybe color 2, and then I set this to white, and then this goes into the height. So let's take a look at that. And um, then I could bring this white down, and you can kind of see anywhere where the black is, it's going to be this uh, pattern. But everywhere where there's white, which there's a lot of places here now, it's going to be smooth still. So you can see that, you know, here's a smooth area here. And if we play with this color ramp, it, uh, you know, recedes or encroaches. The problem here is that if I adjust this shade of gray, it kind of goes away because, you know, white and black, um, there's not really a lot of room for shades of gray in this mix RGB. So instead, I'm going to get rid of this mix RGB, bring this bump down here, and feed this color back into the height. And let's feed this color into the strength instead. And I'm going to take this first um, flag here. Let's go to HSV, Hue Saturation Value. We're going to change this value to 0.1. And the second one, the one that's really strong there, you can see that it's because it's set to 1, which is white. So let's set that at 0.05 instead. Now we've got a bit more subtle variation that doesn't just cut off abruptly. Looks a little bit more natural to me. One last thing we could do too is just kind of vary this Voronoi pattern a little bit with a noise texture. So I'm going to bring in another noise texture, just place it right here, and then bring in a mix RGB and place it right here, and just run vector into color two. I'm going to change the factor here to something much higher, maybe 0.95 looks pretty good, but I'm also going to adjust this noise as well. So why don't we do this at like 20, and then we'll go maybe 9, 8, something like that. The idea is to get a little bit of variation here, um, just so it looks good. You know, a lot of it is personal preference. The higher this scale, the more jagged uh, the, the lines appear. But then you also have to put this at an appropriate level. You know, if this is higher, this should be higher as well. You know, for instance, if we set this at 100, um, you know, that actually isn't too bad. But if we put this at like 9, 9 now, no, maybe 9, 8, 9, 9, 8. It's still too high, so maybe 9.8 there. I don't know. It's it's a lot of experimentation. Maybe 9.9, nine, 9.85. I don't know. Just kind of play around with it until you find something that works well for you. But I'm going to change this back to 20. And let's set this at 0.98. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. I'm going to copy this leather cube and uh, just put it in my other file where I've got my couch waiting. Okay, here we go. I've got my leather couch and I've got my giant leather cube as well. And I took the leather off of this couch so we can add it now. You might be asking, Sam, what the hell is this blanket thing made of? I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe it's llama? Could be llama pelt. Anyway, let's try adding the leather to this um, cushion here. So I'm just going to select that and then I'm going to grab my leather texture, which I called tutorial leather. And we can add it there. You can see it's much too big. Let's actually add it to everything first. Um, and then we can kind of adjust it as we go along here. So we can see it's a little bit too big. Uh, let's grab one of those there. And I'm going to make this shader editor a little larger. And we've got these two mapping nodes here. We can change the scale if we adjust these right here. I'd like to adjust both of them at once. So I'm just going to bring in a value node. And if I plug this into the scale there, it's going to adjust all three of those values at the same time, which is what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to one there. That's the same value we had before. Why don't I go to like 20? Let's see what that looks like. Looks pretty good. Maybe 25. You know, that's looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. You can really see the way that the leather interacts with the light here because of this roughness and bump. 
So if you want to change that around, you know, feel free and do that. But I would recommend looking at the texture at an angle where you can kind of see how the light is interacting with this. So for instance, I've got an HDRI in the background here. If I turn it on, you can kind of see where the light sources are coming from. Maybe looking at it with the light source behind the object is a good idea. Let's finish off by talking about why I use this object output right here rather than like generated or UV. UV would also be something that would work pretty well, but then you have to UV unwrap everything and it is a little bit more time consuming, whereas object just tends to put everything on in a uniform pattern so long as the scale is set appropriately, which um, you know is also good to mention actually too. Let's say one of these pillows wasn't scaled correctly, like let's say the Z was, um, I don't know, let's say it was like this here, where the Z is larger. You can see it's stretched on the Z axis now. So if that was the case, you'd need to go control A and apply that scale. Now this isn't what we want, so I'm going to go ahead and undo those changes. Uh, but just keep that in mind. If it's not looking right, try applying that scale. The reason I didn't use generated is because when you use generated, it tends to stretch everything based on the bounds of the object. So these cushions, for instance, because they're only you know so high and uh, you know they're they're wide, um, they're not as high as they are wide. I guess is a better way of saying it. You can see everything stretched horizontally there. So that's because, um, yeah, this is like 0 to 1 right here, but this is also 0 to 1 based on the bounds. So you can see it's really stretched along this axis. So there you go. Hope that was helpful for you. Putting a quick leather texture on something can really make it pop. And you can really customize this as well with all the settings I put in there. So hopefully it makes sense to you. Uh, if it doesn't, if you're confused, please let me know in the comments. I'll see what I can do to answer any questions you have. Thanks for watching.